It is Seafoto Air Daily, the border of Ascot Daily. Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon with you for Visit Victoria. More to say about them through the rest of the series. And Morris Blackburn, Lawyers Australia's number one plaintiff law firm. Jeff, sum up that day. Very different to yesterday in 30 seconds. It was different, except right at the start when it wasn't. When a couple of wickets fell quickly, uh, Australia resumed at 67 overnight. They managed to get up to 104 when Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazel were batted for an hour and a half to add 25. Uh, it was slow going and then it kept being slow going when India came out. Jayaswell and Kale Rahul uh, battling through some tough bowling but then they just kept going and they just kept going and they just kept going and they were still there at stumps. They put on 172 for the opening partnership. How things changed. They're 218 ahead in the match and Australia are looking down several barrels Set, like they're looking down firing squad barrels at the moment <laughs> things could get really ugly yeah what was it 254 runs in four sessions for the loss of 20 wickets and then two sessions where 172 have been added a lead of 218 Jaiswell 90 goodness me what a yeah. cricketer uh, and down the other end, K.R. Rahul having to make the most of this opportunity for a, a host of reasons that we'll get into on 62. The Australian bowling, for the most part, was actually quite good. There were some thrilling passages of play, competition between bat and ball. However, um, they've got no scoreboard leverage to work with here. Nope. India have got loads of pressure to exert the other way. Yep. And that's exactly what happened. And um, ultimately, that's good test match cricket. Mm -hmm. It's being able to... Uh, absorb and exert as you wish and that's what India are able to do through the afternoon evening session they actually batted more slowly in the final session than the middle session mm. but it didn't matter because by that stage they were doing things completely on their terms they out test matched Australia yeah, they, they, but they made it a test match again um, if, if I can use the somewhat absurd conceit that I used in the piece that I wrote imagine your Keanu Reeves on the bus in speed and you've got to stay above 50 <laughs> miles an hour and then like on day two Dennis Hopper rings and he's like actually stay under 10 miles an hour that's what happened today it was like basically they just put the rental car into reverse on the highway nothing drops into reverse on the highway like a rental car and um and, and suddenly it was like what the hell is this we had because it was not just the 17 wickets in two days but then alex carey uh seventh ball of the morning boomer's first ball of the Bad day shot. he nicks off and not uh, just nicking off like following a ball with his yep. hands that's a yep a 10 out of 10 lead that's the that is, I would say, the like the presence of Boomer yesterday, mm -hmm. and just thinking, "Fuck, I'm just gonna have to play this bloke. I've got to find a way to get back to ball, and mm -hmm. and you know, almost like curtain railing. He, totally. he followed the ball with his hands, yep. and that, that's a recipe for disaster and, when you're and, trying to reach it. And the it. length wasn't one he needed to defend, and the bounce yeah. is there. But Boomer, he's got that kick <laughs> off the wrist, and it decks away off the surface, um, and he gets the edge, and you know, that's the, the way it goes sometimes. I was thinking about this because, and I know we're diverging a bit here. People have been talking about the pitch a lot whether it was too difficult yesterday whether it was too easy today suddenly it's like well they've dug the pitch up overnight and put a new one in and it's no good you know and and sort of people are looking for things to be annoyed about instead of maybe just like four of the best fast bowlers in the world were playing in the same test match and they got a bunch of guys out because there weren't any really bad shots i think like carry shot was bad jaya swell's shot in the first innings was bad you know played a drive he shouldn't have played and, and maybe Coley when he, he was he was shifting around too much and he couldn't he didn't allow himself the time to try to get back. There were obviously there were errors made when the players when players got out, but there weren't any really horrible shots that were played yeah. for those wickets to fall. There was just good bowling, um, and and it ended up the way it ended up on the first innings. And then you see that things can change drastically as a pitch eases up, and and that's what it's done. Yeah, well, it was the lived experience of watching it from the ground. The sort of uh, two plus two equals four. That is to say, the 17 wickets plus day one equals shit heap. Um, I saw one, you, know, it's a, you see a number of reply guys on Twitter, right? That's the nature of the beast. But one saying, well, it, it simply must be. There were 17 wickets when, mm. yeah, you know, I look at the pitch this morning. Um, I used the Brisbane 2022 reference point, I think, yep. on our podcast last night. It wasn't that. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't like there were divots to aim at, which no. that made Brisbane a pitch that was downgraded. It wasn't because the wickets fell. It was the fact that much as it's been at India at time to time where we've seen pitches that have shot through the surface right away, there's an assessment made that the, the balance between bat and ball is not able to be met due to the conditions. This mm. was, as you summed up very neatly then, an exercise in outstanding fast bowling all coming together on the same day. That's allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. That is permitted to happen in Test Match Cricket. Yep, some poor batting as well, but they got boomerang, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, and by the same token, India yesterday got worked over by 
Josh Hazelwood, who's the number two fast bowler in the world and got the better part of 300 yep. test wickets. And, and you know, he, he won't be seen as such because of Cummins and, right. and Stark, but he, he's also a generational great, Josh Hazelwood. And, and today, I thought what was interesting in this third innings is that it was not easy by any means out there. So Hazelwood goes for nine off his first 10 overs. Yep. Kale Rahul and Jayaswal come out and they play very sensibly, very circumspectly. Jayaswal plays a couple of big shots here and there and misses, but Kale Rahul just does what he did in the first innings, which is he's careful about line, he's circumspect about where he tries to pick up runs. He's still nudging the ball around. He's not absolutely in his shell, even through, the, through those first overs. Um, but he's able to see off all the difficult parts. He edges the ball a fair few times, but he's played with such soft hands in this test that yep. he edges it down into the cordon. And so they manage to get through the testing bit, and then they're able to accumulate and accumulate. And Kale was so good in the first innings, uh, he carries that on into the second. And Jaiswell, you know, as he's shown us in the 18 months he's been playing test cricket, uh, if he gets going, then he becomes incredibly difficult to stop and he looked so happy so comfortable playing on this Perth pitch and it's not like all the life went out of it there was still bounce there oh, was yeah. still pace it just wasn't quite as much as it was yesterday yeah watch Josh Hazel would spell after tea and tell me that wasn't that wasn't taxing test cricket that was intense test cricket let's deal with them in turn K.O. Rahul probably needs to make a score this week to be in the test team next week yeah knowing that Rohit Sharma gets here tomorrow yep Shubham Gill uh, made a couple of hundreds against England earlier this year. There's just no realistic way yep. Gill is going to They took away Shubman Gill's iPad and the, the wrist is now getting better. <laughs> There's no way in the world Gill's not playing next week as well. So that means KL Rahul's in a rather tough spot because mm. they're not dropping Jaiswell. So no. go, you know, it's like you need to make runs here or not. But gee, his hands were pillows. Mm. The number of times he had balls deflect off the outside edge and land well short of the cordon, that's a sign of a player in pretty bloody good touch. There's mm -hmm. a reason why... He's enjoyed success in sporting conditions before. Why he's made hundreds in England, made hundreds in Australia, made hundreds in South Africa. He has got the game that's equal to these conditions. So that's KL Rahul. I'm absolutely thrilled for him. Other side of the ledger, Jaiswell has got the opportunity, and it's an early call, he's got the opportunity to be the defining player of his generation. Now we've seen that two generations ago it was Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, this generation it's been Rat Kohli. The best player in India invariably becomes the, the player the generation is built around, owing to the way that cricket has absorbed and consumed and all the rest of it. Jaiswal's got a 13 ball 50 in the IPL. Jaiswal can play that standing sweep shot that he played today, which might be one of the more outrageous shots you can imagine anyone playing in test cricket, but he's got the skills to pay the bills. The flick he played with barely a swing of the bat right mm. out the middle that went all the way for six, despite the fact there was a deep backward square leg put out there. The bravado and the confidence to do that. You put that package together, and you think about where Cole is at in his journey, 36 years of age. I love the fact that there's a link in the chain between Tendulkar and Kohli. And I know Dhoni, there'll be people in the comments saying, what about Dhoni? Yes, Dhoni, of course, but slightly different because he's more a, a white ball master. Great test player as well, but more seen for being a white ball mm -hmm. uh, master for such a long period of time. And the success he enjoyed as captain in that white ball team. But Jaiswal playing with Kohli at the end, it might be he who we're talking about for the next 15 years. Indeed, yep. I suspect it probably will be. The start to his career is astonishing. And if and when he goes to three figures tomorrow, it'll be another landmark day in exactly the same way as it was when Tendulkar over there got 100 at the Wacker in 1992. And there will be so much. Oh, 100 in his first test at Perth and all the rest of that will go be, on. And I'll be leading the way. You will be. I like the way, I like, the, I like that he, he said, pick things up at the end, charge down the pitch a couple of times. Sort of. So coming into that last hour. Over Kate, there's the Wacker, by the way. Kate, that Kate Rahul Is that and, the Wacker? No, we've had that wrong every other time. It's across that's the river. Not, that's not the Wacker. No, that's, that's, not, a, that's, that's a bridge. Another, that's it's down ground. this way. It's down, um, down, down, down. It's, it it's to the, the west. Same. Where's Sorry. the sun setting? The sun's setting over there. That's where the Wacker is. Okay, thanks. The Western <laughs> Australian Cricket Association ground. <laughs> they, they both came into the last hour with strike rates in the 30s. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was slow um, because they were, they were taking the life out of the Australian fast bowlers. They, they were, were doing them, them slowly. They were doing them slowly. Um, so, so some things that I enjoyed about that, there are people I'm already seeing saying, obviously, Stark, Hazelwood and Cummins are too old and they shouldn't be picking fast ah. bowlers in their 30s. Ah. I'm like, they just bowled him out for 150 yesterday. I, I, I saw one. I saw one saying that um, <laughs> this is because uh, Cummins missed the one day and went to the oh. Coldplay gig. Oh yeah, yeah. And of course, you get the usually bit woke that Cummins woke. Mm. Bit woke. Yeah. Bit woke. Get oh. an education, so you fucking morons. Shane Shane Warne was friends with Coldplay, and that was okay. Yeah. But, but Pat Cummins can't go to Coldplay. Um, yeah. So I was like, bowled him out for 150 yesterday, then had 50 overs off because the batting innings were so short, and Stark and Hazelwood batted for almost 20 of those overs. So, yeah, they, did, they didn't get a lot of a, a break, but I think they're fine. I think they just, you know, bowled well and didn't take wickets. Or, you know, bowled as well as they might have been able to 
in the circumstances where some of the the, the pepper gone out of the pitch. But so I think we're there. There are also people. So we're dropping. We're dropping Smith. We're dropping Labuschagne. We're sacking Bailey. We're sacking McDonald. That's at the moment. I reckon <laughs> one more bad test at uh, at Adelaide and Kawaj is getting sacked. Heads getting sacked. So there's no. There's going to be much left. And then maybe. I think Third there is test, a, it's maybe I think there's a perfectly reasonable, measured debate to be had around Australia's top seven. Sure. Right? Or probably top six, because Kerry's coming to the... It's a, it's a fair one. There's, they've, they've added three hundreds now across... Well, this will be the eighth test in a row since that run begins. That is unusual, especially in Australia. That's not counterbalanced, but that's informed yep. by what we know about how difficult it's been to bat in Australia in the last few years for reasons that we went through on the podcast last night. And I won't mm-hmm. repeat today. Um, but you can go through that and say that were they a little bit underdone? Was it an error in hindsight not to play more Red Bull cricket when they had the opportunity to do so um, through the early rounds of the Sheffield Shield? That's And indeed the Australia A uh, games yep. that were played. Was there a chance to give one or more of them a chance to play for, for Australia yep. A? And to um, have a look at some of the Indian bowlers. But none of this is perfect. Life's not perfect. The fact that Travis Head and Mitchell Marsh were on paternity leave um, in the last couple of weeks is... I mean, I'm not saying they would have necessarily played uh, red ball cricket in that window mm. but yeah that's part of it and it's modern cricket it's scheduling it's the endless desire to too try many and get children. players is the problem too many children <laughs> is that is that what we've arrived at well, Rohit Sharma's missing test matches <laughs> should we just have fewer well, children well you know what well, I'm sure I'm sure there will be some out there who'll say that Head and Mars shouldn't have gone on paternity leave kids. you know anyway too many kids you, you can ignore them in the same way uh, right. you can ignore the um, ones I mentioned before but what I really mean to say here is, yep. is that yeah that's a valid conversation but the 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 natural concluding point isn't, you know, hang them all and let God sort it out. Like, there, like, there is a just, middle ground here, right? <laughs> I just enjoy that everyone's getting sacked after one batting innings. First yeah, batting yeah. innings of the summer. No good. They've all got to go. I've got a theory to put to you. I'm interested to, to hear your thoughts on this. I think, okay, the stark Hazelwood partnership, which goes for what, 18 and a half overs, yep. 110 balls they faced, an hour and a half. Yep. I reckon that was worse for Australia than if they'd got out at the start of it. Like, I think if they'd had a little sloggeroo, you know, wh- whacked a couple of boundaries and got out in 10 minutes after Nathan Lyon got out. The pitch was still doing something in the morning. Like, there was still there was still life in it. And I think I just think the energy of the game was hectic. It was fast forward all through that first day and then into the second morning. Holy shit, it's still going. Carey's out. Lyon's out. Hazelwood's mm. out. And he should have been out because there's a catch that Richard Punt misses. At first, uh, goes between him and first slip yep. and, and gets up a bit too high and a bit too fast and Boomer uh, isn't able to get that sixth wicket. I, re- I just think if, if Australia, if they're all out in that first 20 minutes, they come out and hit India after half an hour in the morning and India would still be in the mental position of going like holy shit, this game is nuts. We're worried, we're anxious and all the rest of it. The fact that the last pair batted for an hour and a half, they looked more and more comfortable as things went on. The pitch eased and eased as things went on. They looked happy they looked, it looked like it was relatively comfortable for them to survive. If you're Jaiswal, if you're duck in the first innings and you're watching those two bat for 90 minutes, you're thinking, well, actually, by the time I get out there, this is going to be okay. And they go through to uh, the scheduled lunch break. They would have had an extra half hour, but uh, Stark finally gets out playing a big shot. I was wondering shot. about that. Would it have been discretionary? Or what have they been for? Because remember, they've been batting together. I wonder whether the umpires th- might have seen fit to take lunch. Yeah. I don't know. I think I guess an umpire could say, well, you've batted for an hour and a half, so you're fine. But yeah. I think they would have taken it because the Australians took drinks. They, they had the runner come out with drinks like uh, two with overs. Gloves, yeah. One out, one over before the, the schedule. That's going to be in my Hall of Fame. I'll hold on to that. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> but but I, think, I think that's why. I think that they were expecting to bat another half hour. Oh, okay. So... The way I'm reading it is that by that point, it's got easier to bat, and India have been shown that it's now easier to bat. Right. And plus, Stark and Hazelwood are tired because they. Yep. yep. So yeah, they, they get the lunch break, but Kale Rahul and Jaiswal get the lunch break to chill out, to you know, put their pads on, leisurely fashion, not a 10 minute changeover, grab a bite to eat, grab a grab a drink, set themselves for the task, and then come out and bat. And I just think okay. if they've been coming out after 25 minutes in the first session with the pitch doing a bit more with that morning freshness, that would have been a much more difficult task, and it wasn't worth the 25 runs. Even 25 out of 104 is a lot. I, I, th- I think it wasn't worth it in the, the overall washer. Well, when you started speaking then, I thought, where the fuck's he going here? Yeah. Now, you might have convinced me. I, yeah. I mean, I, you're right. The helter-skelter nature of it meant that 25 runs in the wider scheme of things in a low-scoring game could be important. Yeah. But you're right. But it it's offset, no longer a low-scoring game. Right. So you offset yeah. the, um, the, the chaos component, which yep. was fueling the game to that juncture. Even mm. when the ninth wicket fell, it still felt like totally loose, didn't it? Yeah. It had that energy to it that was manic. And... Yes, they did take the sting out of 
what was going on. Indeed, for about five minutes, see, like, have they got it? Are they going to get these two blokes out? Are they going to bat to lunch? <laughs> Hazelwood batted for 32 overs yep. with Cameron Green at Wellington earlier this year. Mitchell Stark's a player who's shown over a number of years, over a decade, that he's more than capable batting at the top level. He faced 112 balls, I think it was, for his 26 today. So, you know, but the way you frame it there, at the time I thought how profligate getting out just before they might get India out in the field again. Mm -hmm. The other side of this, of course, is it's a game of marginal gains where in a five test match series, getting India to have to bowl in one more session or one more hour might have a kind yeah. of a multiplier effect in three test I matches I just didn't time. think anyone had bowled enough for that to be a factor this yeah. early in the series. Pro pro you know? Probably so. I just kind of thought that if they make them bowl in the middle yeah. session, then you know it's one more time of getting warmed up, one more yeah. time putting the, putting the boots on. I, I could see but, why but that I might be. I kind of see where you're coming yeah. from too, that even if they're bowled out for what would have been, what was it, it was nine down well, so at 80, they would have been about 80 if they'd got no, out there. No, now for 80. Yeah. 80 or you 79, tell Stark to have a slog, he whacks a couple of fours, but let's they play get the up game to 95. Where it's, let's it's play 80. the game where it's all at 79, sure. right? You know, they lose the wicket right away trying to slog. It would have meant they had an hour and a half before lunch. Yeah. They batted for 90 minutes. That yeah. might be the more important indicator than runs. It might be just how much yeah. time the pitch had to, to just to exactly. do its thing. To, to take sun um, yeah. and to get some of the moisture out of yeah. it and to lose Whatever's some of that zip and freshness. There. Yeah. Because it was there for Boomerah early. Like it did, it was kicking early a lot more than it, it did later on. So yeah, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a curious one where I thought maybe they were against their best interests and, and, you know, and Boomerah's captaincy was odd with having the field back for Stark and all the rest of it who barely played a big shot until he got out. But uh, maybe in the end it worked in India's favour. Uh, a final word for Jasper Pumar. He had three wickets last night. Make that four. My apologies. Got his fifth with his first mm -hmm. ball. First ball today. Because he got a bag of five. I think we're able to say things like it's one of the best performances from a visiting seamer in this country. Sure, it would have been even more impressive if he wasn't required to come back for a spell at the very, very end, yeah. which didn't bear fruit. And he fruit. should have had the sixth. He, should he, have gets had the the sixth. Hazel, he gets the Hazelwood edge, that's went the sixth. The yeah, it would have which, been the sixth. But I think, you know, when you, when you frame it up and think about all the spells that have been bowled in this country, say, in the modern game by visiting seamers, certainly Indian seamers here, there's a you know, Safraz Nawaz nine for, there's the, the Kapil Pfeiffer when they bowled out Australia for 80 odd at the MCG to, to you know, heist when they were chasing about 120. There'll be others as well, I'll leave them in yep. the comments, but that's gonna stand out in the memory for me as one of the, like one of the truly great spells. Gideon had in his piece overnight. It, it was more surprising with the 33 balls where he didn't take a wicket in his first yep. spell last night. And that's how it felt to the naked eye. So uh, Jasbit Bormrat cannot wait to see him do his thing through the remainder of the test match. Jeff, it's time for us to move to the final word, Hall of Fame. The final word, Hall of Fame, is brought to you mm -hmm. by Morris Blackburn Lawyers. Seabus Super as well, 40th birthday. Morris Blackburn Lawyers, number one plaintiff law firm in Australia. Mm -hmm. Experienced lawyers working on your behalf. So it doesn't require a hefty bank balance to obtain legal support when you need it most. In any number of different areas of life, um, you've got the opportunity to engage a lawyer who will be on your side. They've been doing this since 1919. This is not some flash in a pan operation. Mm -hmm. 105 years, Jeff. 105 years working on behalf of working people. So that's why we're proud to be in association with them. So if you do need your legal needs cared for, mm -hmm. consider going with Morris Blackburn Lawyers. All the information for them is in the show notes. Some of Australia's most experienced and best lawyers in 30 face-to-face -face locations yep. around the country. Um, go to them if you need them. Hall of Fame. A uh, little one for me that I noticed today. I knew, obviously, that Kale Rahul had the, had the long hair going, the flowing locks mm. as he's running around in the field. The one, the one when he was running in from gully to take the catch from Lyon, Lyon I think, yep. this morning. Good ball, that. Good bumper. Yeah, good. With, with the nasty one from, from Rana, who, who bowled quick and, and, and looked uh, uncomfortable to face at a bunch of times, sort of low, low mid-140s at different times. Yeah, the hair was flowing, but then I didn't realise until he was coming out to bat that he's he's not just got the bandana on, the sort of Foxy Fowler style, you know, mm. make sure you've got uh, something between <laughs> your, your head and the, and the plastic of the helmet. He's got a Red Bull bandana on. Ah, oh, right. It's a real throwback now. He's like, does anyone buck. still drink that shit? Like no, they got uh, well. They're a gigantic global sports yeah, brand. Yeah, but, uh, but that might be why. But it just feels like it's so anachronistic. You'll see him on, you'll see him on pit lane next year. I mean, doing a, they're doing the. Um, I know they're uh, doing the X Games. <laughs> like I know they're doing the you know zero gravity skateboard vert or whatever the you know the the Tony Hawk 420 McTwist in low gravity or well all that the the cave diving and all that kind of stuff that they do. But it just it just feels like something from 20 years ago. Like I'm amazed that they're still selling stuff. I know Ben Stokes is always chugging one on the balcony at Lords. I, I think the thing you've missed here is that they're by a, a country mile the biggest brand in F1. 
and right. F1 is in rude health at the moment. So this yeah. might be a KO Rahul's what's drive to survive. Okay. He's really into Max Verstappen. Yep. He used to like Ricardo until so he moved yep. and you know, he's into <laughs> he's into Max Verstappen. Do you think so he goes to the so full moon parties? Do you think uh, he goes to Koh Penyang in Thailand <laughs> and gets like the syrup version in the little bottle and pours it into the bucket? Ma- maybe maybe you know? so. That, that could be an option for him. He might be um what were those things back in the um Jaeger bombs? Yeah. The, 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 um, where you did a little tip in and the little yeah, waterfall Red Bull, thing. Red, Red Bull, Bull and Jagermeister. Red Bull and Jagermeister. What a anyway. cough medicine and cough medicine. I like the better one that our dear friend Andrew Donison created, which was the Soviet ice bomb, which had a number of things going on in it. Yeah. Have one of them with me. Or Dono, one day, you're, you're welcome to. Um, blue Caracayo never be the same. Contro into a, okay. into a lemon rusky. Huh. And it would turn blue. Solid. And Dono would say, when it turned blue, my heart grew. <laughs> Very him. They say his heart grew three sizes that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's probably why he was wearing the headbands. Get on pit lane and do the um, do the walk down there. Hope he chugs one. Hope, when he brings up his hundred, I hope they bring him out one on a tray. <laughs> you know, like, like, like you know, like Glenn Turner when he got his hundredth hundred. Uh, bring out the little um, shot of like, gin, like an even bigger one. I don't know if you've t- if you're, you've discovered White Claw yet. They've been sort of going across the world. They're like a premix booze thing. But they, the ones in the US just get bigger and bigger. They've got these cans that are like they seem like a third of a gallon or something, oh. and they sell them in gas stations. And it's like you're not allowed to drive with an open container but you are allowed to buy 1.2 litres of white chlorina can from the gas station yeah good it's like a 40 like like a 40 ounce beer pretty much I feel like people are not necessarily respecting that rule when when I went to the states when I was like 21 I really wanted to get a 40 because you know I we'll go out and Marcel for 40. Yeah, we'll um, go out and get 40s. Fuck, yeah. go into that party strokes lyric from 1251. Uh-huh. I want to go get a 40. Yeah. I want to get a 40 Didn't know answer. what it was. Didn't know what Didn't it was. Know exactly. I still don't know what 40 ounces is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's malt liquor. When malt, it's bartenders it's in the US will say, do you want 12 ounces or 16 ounces? And I'm like, well, again, not a question I've heard since <laughs> high school, but um, <laughs> that just doesn't. I'm the same right. You're, anyway. You're buying 16 ounces. Well, well look, it's busy. In the, in the import Elf, export business. Elf, in Eltham High School. You know, the, the theatre program, the band program, <laughs> the creative arts system. You know, anyway. Had to run on let's, something. Um, let's, let's consider <laughs> what else I for the whole of Dougie thing. Bracewell these uh, days. I like, I like Did you read that yarn? No. Dougie What's Bracewell's been, been banned for doing gear. Oh. I didn't know you could get well, banned for that. Okay. Well, just smoking. Doing coke. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was a... I, well, I didn't know whether they were testing for it. Well, we are in Perth. I mean, you well, know, I mean, this Doug is... Doug doesn't live in Perth. Is, no, but I mean, this is the home of combining that <laughs> with the, an elite sporting career. With Red Bull. Um, and Red Bull, yeah. Oh, I um, just, just had 16 Red Bulls, officer. <laughs> so, uh, to, to come back to the Boomer a bit... The Boomer a bit for Hall of Fame. I, yep. I, I, I love that when he came on, they were like, oh, four for overnight. Could he get a fiver? And literally, first ball of the day. Yes, he can. Yeah. Because he's Boomer. And he does. Uh, um, that yes. bit I loved. And uh, and Manus Labuschagne, that... that the bouncer he bowled, because uh, he bowled an over just before T, wasn't it? But then he comes on and bowls the last over of the day. And I'm thinking, like, this novelty sort of party trick is getting a bit stale. I'll bring Manus on for one at the end. But he did bowl one really good bouncer at Kale Rahul that came off the glove and had him hopping and fending. And it was in there. It wasn't pleasant. I mean, say what you will. He's bowling at 135 kilometres an hour. Mm. That's what he hit today, bowling yeah. his short stuff. And you, you lose a bit when you're bowling short on the speed gun as well. Like, that's not slow. He's no. turned himself into a genuine bouncer option. And, I, and I'm He's bowling and I'm faster than it. Glenn McGrath in the last five years of his career. Faster than Glenn McGrath ever bowled. And I'll tell Pinch at him tomorrow. <laughs> it's true. I mean, Glenn McGrath in 1998 at the MCG when Steve Waugh was bowling quicker than him. Um, when, the, when the speed guns first rocked up. I mean, it's just... And it's no... Glenn McGrath is one of the all-time greats. Martin Slapashane is not. Um, but you know, if you're looking at it pure, pure, mm. pure pace mm-hmm. ratings, uh, Manus isn't slow. Uh, Stark to Rana, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, they're, mate, they're mates from uh, KKR, aren't they? Oh yeah. Uh, where um, Stark goes up to Rana when he bounces him, he goes, um, "I bowl faster than you, and I've got a long memory," <laughs> which is quite good from Stark in the heat of battle. Um, they all enjoyed a good laugh. And the Jaiswell shot that I referred to before, the standing sweep with the back knee kissing the turf, Kim Hughes-esque, and um, somehow launching it over mid-wicket. Outrageous T20 stuff, the best of T20 cricket into the longest form of the game. That's the that's what we're getting with Jaiswal right now, and that's why um, we're all um, very quickly falling in love with the cricket that he plays. That's us done, Jeff. We've got to go and do other things. Yep. Like go to the pub and have a Red Bull. Have, have, have a Jaeger bomb. Seven, can you bring me a litre and a half of, <laughs> of uh, Can I have a 40, 40 ounce, yeah. uh, whatever oh, 40 it is. 40 ounces of Jagermeister with uh, 160 ounces of Red Bull. <laughs> I'm going to swim in it. With 21, 28.1 grams of uh, Red Bull into it. Anyway, whatever. It's, it's going to be a superhero <laughs> origin story, a villain origin story when we come out of that tub. Uh, see by Super, 40 years this year. Get your super sort of that. See by Again, Working people, making sure that people have suitable retirement savings. 
valid honourable stuff. Make sure you get your super sorted out. They're 8.87% average return in the time they've been a fund in their default my super account is not for nothing their past performance however is not a reliable indicator of future performance we are obliged to say that this is the final word it's been the daily the board of gavaska day two we will catch you tomorrow bye bye bye